Welcome to Reading a Weaving Draft with Jane Stafford. We are getting so many questions from brand new weavers about reading weaving drafts. So I thought I'd create just a tiny little video to go over a few of the basics. So most weaving drafts have three parts to them. They have this big horizontal area right here, which is where our threading goes. Our threading goes in here. There's this vertical area here, and this is where our treadling is notated. And this little box up here, this little junction where threading meets treadling is called your tie-up. And your tie-up is what links your harnesses, where your threading is, to your treadling, which is where your feet are. Let's have a closer look at our threading. Whenever you see a threading draft like this, you count the number of rows that there are in it, and that tells you how many harnesses that pattern was written for. Each one of these spaces between the lines represents a heddle on one of those harnesses. And whatever form of notation is used within that square in this column, that tells you that it's a warp thread on a particular harness. So, I'm going to get a clean sheet and let's just draw in the most common weaving threading that there is into our threading uh, box and which is a one, two, three, four threading. It's called a straight draw threading. Uh, twills can be woven on it, plain weave can be woven on it. So many things to do with just one, two, three, four. But if you were to see a draft that went like this, one, two, three, four, you would know that you would put the first thread in your warp in a heddle on harness one, the second thread of your warp in a heddle on harness two, the third on three, the fourth thread on four, and then it would repeat again and again and again, one, two, three, four, for as long as you wanted to thread that way. Sometimes you might see a notation under here. If it's a simple little threading of one, two, three, four for the entire width of the warp, there would be a times and that number that would be in here would, would uh, indicate how many times you threaded one, two, three, four in a row. Sometimes things change. Say in twills, one, two, three, four, let's say we did that 10 times. That would take up 40 threads of our warp but then we're going to put a point twill in it. A point twill goes one, two, three, four, three, two, that's the point right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, there's six threads in there. I am going to put a bracket around that and I'm gonna say I'm going to thread that 10 times. So that means I'm going to have 60 threads. I have 60 threads up here, I have 40 threads up here. One, two, three, four times 10 is 40. One, two, three, four, five, six times 10 is 60. If I repeated that 60 times, I'd need 60 threads. And I'm going to put one last lone one in here because that one will make it symmetrical. I don't want to go one, two, three, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, one, because you'd get double ones. So the bracket, therefore, only goes from this one to that two, because that's the full repeat. And after you've done that as many times as you're supposed to down here, we'll put in the last lonely little framing one, which is just there. Sometimes these little framing ones get circled it indicates that it only happens the one time. If I wanted to make this draft symmetrical, I could then thread 4, 3, 2, 1, coming down here. 4, 3, 2, 1, repeat that times 10. Gosh, I've just made my own little threading draft for a twill or plain weave. We could do both with this threading. Anyway, I'm just doing this not because I particularly want to weave you to weave this, but I want you to understand that we can have very simple threadings where this started out and it could just be one, two, three, four over and over and over. Then I made it something different. 
we repeated this 10 times. You move in sequence, going from right to left, following your brackets until you get to the end. Most drafts are written to be read from the right to the left. And the reason being is that most of the world is right-handed. And it's much easier to thread your loom using your right hand to grab the thread and bring it through the heddle eye than it is to do it from the left. If, if you're a lefty, then I would start threading on this side and read my draft from here to here. But righties typically read from right to left. Makes sense, it's easy at the loom. So there's one simple little draft for a plain weave or a twill. Now we're gonna look at the tie-up box. The tie-up box is got the same number, it has the same number of rows in it, but it has one, two, three, four, five, six columns in it. That tells me that this is for a four harness loom that has six treadles on it. Most four harness looms have six treadles. Each one of these stands for a treadle, represents a treadle. But what happens in here is how we link the treadles to the harnesses via the tie-up. Plain weave is the simplest tie-up that we have out there. And plain weave on a straight draw threading or a twill threading is one and three against two and four. If we wanted to weave this entire piece in just plain weave, we would have to tie our tie-up to our treadles, we would have to tie up our treadles via our lambs to our harnesses. And then we would just go treadle there, treadle there, treadle there, treadle there. I only have to write that actually once for you to know that you're going to repeat tabby or plain weave over and over and over. The twill part of a tie-up goes like this. A standard 2-2 twill tie-up goes one and two, two and three, three and four, one and four. So if you saw a pattern like this, you would know that it has the ability to weave plain weave right here, but it also has a two-two twill here. And you can weave them separately. If I wanted to weave it in twill, then I would be treadling on these guys. There are hundreds of thousands, if not millions and billions of threading drafts because there's so many different weave structures. But the most important place and the easiest place to start is with simple things like plain weave and twill. And just know that you read your brackets going across, you know how to use your tie-up, and you know that this gives you your treadling sequence. Notation from book to book to book is completely different too. I've used numbers here in this book. And I've used numbers in my tie-up because it's easy for me to read them. And when you're underneath the loom, it's nice to know that that's a one and a three and a two and a four. Here's another book. This is a great book. It is The Handweaver's Pattern Directory by Ann Dixon. 600 amazing foreshot patterns in here. Over 600. Fabulous book. Most books, even if the notation looks different, there will be a place in that book where they'll tell you a little bit about it. So, and uh, very early on in this book, there's a page nine, and it tells you here uh, what your tie-up grid is written for. They're not using numbers at all, or Anne's not using numbers at all. She's using black squares. But you can see that she has a black square in one and a black square in three for her first treadle. So that's one and three, and this is a black square in two and a black square in four for the next treadle. There's one and two, two and three, three and four, one and four. So they're not numbers, but the black squares indicate that that's what you tie up. For her threading, she's using uh, a colored square as well, and that's another way of making that notation. But if you were reading this pattern, this blue square right here starts on the second harness. So that means you would thread your loom. The first thread in your warp would be on harness two. The second thread in your warp would be on three. The third thread in your warp would be on four. 
then it would go one, two, one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, one, two, three, two, one, etc., etc., etc. And here are her treadlings down here. She has little brackets, which means you would do what's in the small bracket three times and then move down. You always read your small brackets first and then your big bracket second. Um, it tells us here that all the patterns in this book, the tie-up has been given for a rising shed loom. Rising shed looms are looms that when you step on a treadle, the harnesses go up. Let's have a look at another book. This uh, book is also published by Interweave Press. It is Carol Strickler's Eight Shaft Pattern Book, another well-loved book. My goodness, everyone wants this book. Right here, when we look at her drafts, she's using numbers. They're using numbers to indicate the first thread goes on one, the second thread goes on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But in the tie-up box, the tie-up box uses circles. That's another way of making a notation. It's not a square, it's not a number, it's a circle. But wherever the circle is, you have to count up. So there's a circle in the second box. Let me get my pencil here. There's a circle in the second box, the fourth box, the seventh, and the eighth box. So you have to know that you're going to tie up this very first treadle to two, four, seven, and eight. Your next treadle will be tied up to three, four, six, and eight. Your next treadle we will be tied up to one, three, seven, and eight. And this last one will be one, two, uh, what is that, five and seven. So whenever you see circles in a box, it automatically tells you that this pattern was written for a rising shaft loom. The last book we looked at too, this one, the patterns were written for a rising shaft loom, but the notation was in black squares. We had to read this to know that it's talking about a rising shed loom. Whenever you see a circle, you know it's for a rising shed loom. So everything in here is for rising shed. One way to remember that is that a lot of people think of these as balloons, and balloons rise. If they're filled with helium, balloons rise, and that tells us it's for a rising shed loom. So again, we have all kinds of patterns in here where things are different. Let's look at our treadling. Here is a treadling sequence that starts over here on this set of treadles rather than at the beginning. Um, it changes the direction. All of these things change the direction of the pattern that's happening, but it's always best to just do, if you're following a pattern, just do what's in the book until you see how it's all working. And uh, there you go. So many different possibilities in this book of variations on a theme. Absolutely fabulous eight shaft pattern book. So there's one last book I want to draw your attention to, and that is Marguerite Porter Davison's book, a book I've spent so long studying. This, is, this was the first weaving book I ever got, A Handweaver's Pattern Book by Marguerite Porter Davison, and it was published in 1950. Her way of drafting is different yet again, but the one thing that is the same in all the books that we've looked at is that we have this horizontal strip, these vertical strips, and this junction where they all meet, the tie-up box. Here, Marguerite Porter Davison just uses ticks in a row. So this would start on harness four, three, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. That is the repeat. She doesn't use brackets. She uses lines like this. This is the tie-up box. And, and much like Carol Strickler's book, it's a pattern book. All kinds of variations off of one threading. So all the little squares here are variations created by changing either your tie-up or changing your treadling sequence. So much can be done on four harnesses. It's unbelievable. Her tie-up box is filled with little X's. And X's in the weaving world guarantee, pretty much, 
that this pattern was written for a sinking shed loom. And all of Marguerite Porter Davison's patterns were written for sinking shed looms, which are counterbalance looms. That means that when you tie something up to those treadles, the harnesses to the treadles on a counterbalance loom or a sinking shed loom, when you step on that treadle, the harnesses go down. And the way we remember this is that X's are like anchors and they sink. Balloons, remember from the last book, they're risers because they're filled with helium, they go up. So those are just some basic things to think about. Um, I'm going to pull out another draft here. These are a few drafts from our business. Uh, we're always evolving, <laughs> learning how to use technology. And uh, so here's how you would follow the brackets on this pattern. There you, you would read from the right to the left all the way across and it goes one, two, three, four, but you do those 14 times. Then you do five, six, seven, eight, and you do that 13 times. One, two, three, four, 13 times. Always watch your brackets. This tie up here, because it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten columns, that tells me I need ten treadles. This tells me I need eight harnesses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's see, what else have we got here? Here's another one, a little more complex. Four harness pattern, but we have to always watch our brackets. It's a little more complex because it has double brackets. So here we have, we're starting with one and two. That's in a bracket and it says times 12. So the first 24 threads in your warp will be threaded one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Once that's done, tie them in a little boat, get them out of the way and you're ready to thread the next section. The next th section goes one, three, one, three, one, two. And there's a bracket around it and it says do it twice. So do that. One, three, one, three, one, two. One, three, one, three, one, two. You're done. Tie that in a little boat and put it to the side. Then your next threading is one, two with a little bracket times six. So I'm going to do that six times. Takes up 12 threads. Now I come to brackets within brackets. Whenever you come to brackets within a bigger bracket, do your little brackets first. So that means that you would do one, three, one, three, one, two. I have to do what's in this bracket. It says do it twice, so I'll do it again. One, three, one, three, one, two. Then I keep moving in that direction and I do this one. One, four, one, four, one, two. And I do it again because the little bracket says do it twice. And after I've gotten to this point, there's a big bracket around both of those and it's telling me to repeat this sequence three times. So you do that. You come back to the beginning and go one, three, one, three, one, two, one, three, one, three, one, two, one, four, one, four, one, two, one, four, one, four, one, two. There you've done it twice and you have to come back to the beginning and do it a third time. Then we finish off over here with one, three, one, three, one, two, twice, one, two, times six, one, three, one, three, one, two, times two, and one, two, times 12. Our tie-up is given to us in numbers here, and these are our treadling sequences. So, I hope this is helpful. It's very confusing because there's so many drafts out there and the notation is different everywhere you, you look. Every time you open a new book, something uh, is written a little differently, but the basics are always the same threading, tie-up, and treadling. Hope this helps.